All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sports Card Madness. This is a very unique episode. I'm here with LZ, but I am also here with an ex-grader. This grader worked at Beckett for over a year. And for the purposes of this show, we'll call him Rob, even though his name is not Rob. <laughs> and um, I've been dying to get an episode like this on there because LZ, I know you and I have a ton of questions and our audience has a ton of questions for somebody that's been a grader. So I'm, I'm super psyched and, uh, and pumped to get into this one. Yeah, this is, we, we've been talking about this one since probably the infancy of an idea to even come up with a podcast, Nick. Um, this is just, this is going to be a big one for, for the audience where you, we've reached out to even friends of ours with kind of what sort of questions should we be asking um, and I just, is, this is going to be a great one. Everyone's going to enjoy this. I know it I'm very confident. Uh, Rob, we've, we've had the chance to talk with Rob for a bit and he's just going to be a wealth of knowledge for everybody. This is going to be a really good episode. Absolutely. So Rob, welcome to the pod. Um, so again, you worked at Beckett. How long did you work there again? I was there for a year. Okay, great. So, you know, right off the bat, this is a question that's gnawing at me. Um, I do this all the time with cards. So I will crack open a card, get it signed sometimes, or sometimes I'll just crack open a card and try to get a better grade. Is there a way that you guys can tell if a card has been cracked open or not, if you don't include the label? Um, I would say to an extent, you definitely would know um if like you know stuff's been re resubmitted or if it's been you know a person's trying to get like a higher grade uh that process is done a few different ways now uh when i was there it was a lot easier to like you know mess with the slabs whereas like nowadays it's a lot more stricter where you know they're cognizant of you know what's going on with the slabs when you know even when stuff's been cracked or things like that um or you know something goes wrong with the label um you're not nowadays you're not always guaranteed that same grade but like for example when when i was there um you definitely sometimes could tell if you know this was either you know smashed out of the holder potentially or if like you know you recognize that card before or sometimes like you know Hey, we just we don't want to give this card a higher grade. So there's there's a lot to it of how you could, you know, you could answer that question. Interesting. So do you have like a secret UV ink you put on it? Or are you saying you just kind of recognize the card? Like there's a photo in a database? Yeah, or... I, I think it's a, a combination. Um some tell so sometimes like every couple of months, like maybe, you know, you might recognize that card. Um, or um, for example, um, sometimes maybe it could slip through the cracks where, you know, if you get a different grader, um, you know, you might get a different, a different grade. Um, so sometimes like even, um, I know like when submitters submitted, um, let's say like you would, you might sometimes even know whose cards like you're grading, um, as for example too. So certain graders might've only done, um, a certain person's order. Um, or different things like that. But you definitely, you definitely do have some idea of whose cards, you know, you're doing, um, especially when I was there. Interesting. Yeah, I know LZ's got a question about that coming up. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right, one other question on uh, just on this line of thinking. So mm -hmm. many times I've taken a card, let's say it's, um, you know, a seven, right? And mm -hmm. I crack it open and I get it signed and I, I include the old label. Does that matter at all to a grader? Like, does that impact yeah, your decision? Then, yeah, because then I think they have a general idea of what it's it's gotten before. So I think, you know, more so you're almost sometimes better off just like not even including the label um, just because, you hmm. you know, you might get a higher grade. Um, you might get a lower grade um, just because there's a lot of some of the graders, their grade um more strict and then some grade more lenient. So it really depends like who you get or type of thing. Or um, I've always heard the rumor um, with like um, PSA that like when they hit a certain number of like PSA tens for that specific day, they stop giving tens no matter 
no matter what, like even if the cards like pack fresh, um, that's always been like one of the rumors that have gone around. So it is a numbers game to uh, to an extent um, where, you know, you have to give a certain number of nine fives, like you have to give some BGS tens. Um, you have to put like certain subgrades on there that are, you know, 10 subgrades, things like that. Cause that's what, it, you know, drives the value, especially at, at BGS. Interesting. Very wow. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Wow. So there is both a, a quota to meet yep. certain grade numbers. And then also there is kind of a, a maximum allotment on a on a daily basis you're saying is how, yeah i would it? say that it was more so that with what like i heard the rumors of that when mm. at psa um okay for at beckett especially sometimes too like um i know sometimes when i was grading that um sometimes i was i was one of the more stricter graders where i was trying to be like pretty accurate so i didn't give too many 10 subgrades but like sometimes i did and sometimes i didn't um, even when I was there, like I only gave out like one black label the entire, the entire time I was there. So wow. I was, yeah. So like, I was pretty, I was pretty tough as far as like, you know, if this, I wanted the card to really look like a BGS 10, um, or like black label, I should say. Uh, and then sometimes too, like, even like when you're trying to get the 10 subgrades, like you want to make sure it's definitely like 10 centering and not just slapping on like. 10 centering um what i had a disagreement with a few of the graders like um i remember specifically it was a uh, 2010 like um manny machado uh bowling chrome auto and the centering on those that year is really bad um and he gave it like nine five centering and i'm looking to myself like how did this how did this get nine five centering like it's just, it's not even close to like nine five centering and i think i gave it like a eight or 8.5 centering he gave it 9.5 so you can kind of you can kind of see like i don't know if like maybe he just liked the card or if he's trying to you know make sure they had given out a certain number of nine fives like i was saying so it's i tried to be accurate that was my my biggest uh, distinction yeah well i'm oh that's great <laughs> oh that's that as a consumer we're, we're hoping that these graders are going to be accurate so just to touch on one other thing that you said right there so how often were you interacting with other graders? Like, you know, uh, how did you even know that that other grader gave it a nine five? Do you have like a system that you go into? You yeah. can see everybody's so, uh, recent grades. Yeah. So the, the way they have the process there um, is I'm not sure if they still do this. I'm sure they might. Um, so I was actually like a junior grader. So like, for example, like I would get like a 200 card order for, for that day. Like I had to hit 200 cards, um, for like the seven and a half, the seven and a half hour shift. And I would put all the subgrades on it. And then, you know, a senior grader would have to look over the cards and then, you know, sometimes like you would, you would get the order back and then you could review it and say, you know, this was changed. This wasn't changed, things like that. Um, so like sometimes like most of the time things weren't changed um, and sometimes they were. So it really depended on what senior grader was looking them over. Um, so I remember there were there were some disagreements like where, you know, things were drastically changed um, or stuff like that. Um, so that's why you kind of you kind of knew like when you're looking back at this, like, yeah, I'm wondering why this got like a nine five centering and things like that. So and that's, I think, a result of certain graders were more you know, lenient, whereas certain graders were more stricter. Um, and I mm. think there was a leniency there when, when they could start to see that they were losing, you know, customers to PSA if they didn't give out, you know, higher grades. That was when it kind of started. Cause when I was, when I was there, like they were pretty comparable um, to PSA as far as like submissions and, and things like that. So. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, you had touched on with one of Nick's questions that mm -hmm. uh, when when these submissions are coming in, Nick's trying to, you know, he's going to submit the extra label. He's going to try to get a better a better grade. Um, but you mentioned that you also understand sometimes if a submitter has like already submitted that Manny Machado. Um, yeah. 
so do you do you have like a system right that you're seeing like this person has tried to submit this Manny Machado twice already and we've given him an, an eight on on both times like is there a, like an audit trail that you go through with each submission? yeah you kind of I mean you kind of look um just but I, I feel like there's so many cards that you're seeing on a given day but it's just like if if for example you might remember a specific card if they've been um you know been resubmitted or things like that and as far as like the other question like the community the communication was happening with the graders like throughout the day so like if something like um like a bigger card would come around people would talk about it or if like there was a card that had question um people would talk about it uh things like that so you do get that familiarity if you know a person's trying to like re keep redoing the same mm -hmm. card as long as it's like something that's like unique but if it's something that's like um, pretty popular you might not know if it's that exact same card that that person is trying to get a higher grade on it's just that you have to have like um, some familiarity on how to grade that specific card yeah and i would even assume you know modern cards as well right it's more difficult like if if you're trying to send in some vintage card you know there's a good chance of probably trying to resubmit that thing how many yeah. i don't know, michael jordan rookie cards do they really mm -hmm. have right compared to yep. um yeah, what whatever your your modern card is. Um, all right, so you you definitely have an understanding of who's submitting, which is interesting. What yeah. about do you know or have a sense of like who the big submitters are, like the big dealers that are sending in a thousand a day uh, yep. to Beckett, and it, that's kind of question number one, two part question, and then secondly are you aware of any kind of preferential treatment uh, that you do give these big dealers because they are sending so much business to the grading company? Yeah. Um, so to answer the first part, um, you definitely know um, who the bigger, you know, like graders are. Um, so like sometimes like when I was there, they would come in like a blue, a big blue bin um, and you would, you would see like how many cards it was and it, it would even have like the dealer's name or like sometimes like um, one of the higher ups um, or like one of our bosses would like just give the people orders and say, oh, here's an order from such and such, or here's a bigger order from here and things like that. And, you know, they would just be put on your, put on your desk and you would know, you know, whose is what. Um, as far as the other question, you know, you definitely uh, hear the rumors that, you know, the more business that people do with, you know, sub submitting more orders and, you know, a, a returning customer, then those people tend to get higher grades or favorable grades. That's definitely um, true to an extent. Um, I personally know one of the guys that uh, was going to Beckett like every week and he got like a black label on a Clayton Kershaw tops update um, 2008 rookie, which is probably like a twenty thirty thousand $30,000 card. Uh, so, and then in like a PSA 10, it's only like right now, I think it's like 800. So there's a big, there's a big difference if you get a black label versus like a PSA 10, um, and that, um, so I personally know who got that like card, like who that person was at the time when I was working there. Um, cause I remember he was saying like, oh yeah, I got, I got a big one from, from Beckett from that's probably cause I gave him so much business and, and things like that. So you definitely, you know. He, you definitely hear the rumors and they definitely are true to an extent. Yeah. Okay. So you're telling me that your boss comes down, walks to your desk with a small box of cards and says, Hey, you know, I want you to take good care of this customer kind of type thing. Talk like do you, when that happened, did you feel um, pressure? I wouldn't say it was, it was more so like, I guess say that, uh, uh exactly. But I, mm. I feel like it's, it's just that, like maybe the graders, this, like the more the senior graders kind of have an idea to say like, Hey, you know, make sure that, you know, we give this guy like, like favorable grades because he, we want him as a returning customer and he's spending a lot of money with us i guess so they kind of just know like mm -hmm. i didn't grade like any favoritism or anything like i just kind of just graded like the best to my ability and said you know this is this this is that and i didn't really care who was 
you know, sending in water, how much people were spending and things like that. So, but I can't say the same, that was the case for what some of the other senior graders were doing or what they were being told to do, because they go also went to a lot of the card shows um, and things like that, or drop-offs there. So you don't know exactly what was, so, all, everything was going down. Like you heard, you heard the rumors on certain things, but mm -hmm. that was it. Did you hear any backlash from anybody, maybe uh, a junior grader like you that was really trying to kind of put their foot down and say, no, this is only a seven and a half. And, yeah. you know, the pressure and, you know, maybe it's a demotion or what have you at work. Did you hear about those things? Um, I did too. Um, like, um, but what happened was they always took like the senior, the senior graders word. Mm -hmm. um, so I know specifically like, um, a person who graded all of their gaming stuff was he was the only guy that graded like their gaming like cards like most of their cards like chart like charizards or pokemon or Yu Gi Oh or magic and he was at the time i was there he was paid only as a junior grader but he was literally their only guy that was doing the gaming so they were vastly you know, underpaying him because they were putting all of his grades through on just whatever he says, you know, was the case. Right. He was like a, a king in his own kingdom. <laughs> really. Yeah, he was just saying, yeah. and he always told me, he's like, yeah, I think Beckett's way underpaying me because, you know, nobody's really checking my grades and they got me doing, you know, 300 plus cards a day. And I'm, and I'm the only one that's doing Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh magic. And he would tell me, he would tell me the stories like outside of work and then, but they never really gave him a, a promotion or anything. That's, uh, so, that's wild. Man. Yeah. And I was, I was responsible for doing about 200 cards, whereas some of the other graders, um, they did like, some of them did three and then some of them did even four. Um, and 400, was, 400, 400 in a seven hour shift. Yeah. Seven and a half hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, cause there was one guy I knew that I don't know how he did it. He, he would spend about 30 seconds a card. Um, but yeah. <laughs> right. So I, wanted... I, don't, I don't know how he did it that fast. Cause I tried to do like up to a minute, sometimes a minute and a half. Um, but, but that was about the max time they wanted you to spend on. It was about a minute and a half. This is great. Cause this is actually the next question I was going to ask. I almost, I did the math in my head as you were saying it. So you were saying 200 cards a day, you work about seven and a half hours. I did the yeah. math. That's about 2.3 minutes per card. Does that feel yeah. right to you? Yeah, that's, that's about right for me. Um, cause sometimes I, I think the highest I got like on a specific day, it was like two thirty or two forty. Mm -hmm. Um, but they told me, they told me that I should be doing about 200 a day because okay. I was in the senior, senior graders were 300, 400. And then sometimes even when they finished their, their four, their, if they hit their 400, they would get up and leave and they were, and they were done for the day. Um, like mm -hmm. I knew a one guy, he didn't even take a lunch. Like he just literally ate, like he had, uh, he got like a 15 minute break and he just like ate lunch at his, at his desk. And I sat like right in front of him and then just, he, he would do all his cards and then just go home. For, and then that was it. So <laughs> Yep. Did you uh, did you feel like two point three minutes a card was enough time, or do you feel like you needed yeah. less or more? Yeah, I think that was enough time. Um, I think maybe like because there was because there was a guy specifically that did uh, vintage, so I sometimes like only did some vintage just to try to you know learn about it more. But they they had a vintage guy specifically, and that was in vintage they considered nineteen eighty um, and back. Okay, so. Um, but yeah, I, I think two, two plus minutes is, was like more than enough time, okay. especially, especially because of the major, majority of stuff I did was modern stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the, yeah. the other kind of follow-up there, you mentioned you worked there for a little over a year and you have one black label in that entire mm -hmm. time. Is that kind of standard, like one black label per person per year? Well, well so this actually happened after I, I left um there was like a a black label controversy where you know i think it was a guy that was working for leaf and he would come in and contribute on weekends and he was one of their graders that would just come in when they were to help out like he wasn't really there working full time or part time or anything like that he just must have been like a contributor or been a grader in the past 
and he actually like the the rumors are he actually came in the office like on the weekend and somehow it, it, he got a hold of his own order and he mm. gave himself 180 like plus black labels on one order which is like almost like unheard of like you could uh you could look it up on like blowout card forums and this and this happened like like I'd say four or five years ago. And I think ever since that happened, like BGS hasn't been the same. I think that's where it's, it was kind of their downfall. Wow. So I actually <laughs> see two, two <laughs> conflicts of interest there. One yeah. is he was working for leaf at the time and he was also yep. a grader. So you could say, you know what, I'm mm -hmm. going to make these cards better just to give leaf a better name that were better quality cards than everybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he got a hold of his own, Submission? Yeah, that's supposedly what I that's supposedly what I've heard. Ooh. Yeah. Like you can you can look into the details on it, like um exactly like on blowout card forums, like everything that went down. Um, but I me me personally, I think that was kind of their downfall because like even last month's submission, Beckett only did like sixty thousand cards and PSA did over a million. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're barely hitting like five, six percent of each month of what in submissions versus what PSA is doing wow for total orders submitted per month amazing i know it, it is interesting from somebody in the industry who submits cards all the time the beckett black label still holds sway and as you say yeah an 800 dollars psa 10 of that card is is 30 grand in a black label like if there was a black yeah. label michael jordan rookie card that yeah. would be worth um That'd be worth yep. over a million dollars where a PSA oh, 10 yeah. is probably a hundred K 150 K something like that. Yep. So um, it's interesting. They still got the the reputation with the black label, but the, mm -hmm. the, the volume of grading, as you say, is, is much less now. And I didn't realize it, it's probably related to the reputation. Mm. Yeah. I think that was kind of the, the start of it. And then I think in, during COVID, um, I think they kind of priced themselves too high out of the, the market. Um, and then, you know, they were also really behind um, on those guaranteed orders too. So like they used to do a 10 day um, guarantee order. Um, and then that even got real tough to do. And then they used to do like a 30 day guarantee, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. So they had this huge like backlog similar to like PSA had when they had to go in and hire all those new graders. Um, and then from let's say 2020, 2021, um, I think the cheapest submission to do a, a Beckett card was like 125 a card or something crazy like that. So they kind of priced themselves out of the market. And then as a result, they lost a lot of customers. Um, and then I don't think they've really recovered yet. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let's talk about you starting out at Beckett. Yeah. How did you get recruited? What was your experience before? Like what made you a grader for Beckett? Okay. Yeah, for sure. So I, um, I, uh, broke into the, the sports like industry, probably, uh, like a year, um, prior to making my decision to Beckett and, I had a connection where I knew a guy that was a dealer in Texas that was like friends with my dad. Um, and he happened to be that guy that got the black label Kershaw and the guy that was like doing all these submissions with Beckett and things like that. So I kind of had like an in where they, you know, I, I, they had me like submit an application and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, we're going to help you get the job and things like that. I was like, okay, yeah. So it was probably about, um, I'd say a three to like five month process of me even having to, um, you know, get recruited and like do like make the decision and things like that. And it started actually in the July of the summer time, they had me do a trial run just as they had me come into Texas and like, they had me like, say like, Put a bunch of cards in my desk and say this is what it's going to be like you got to put all the subgrades and stuff like that and i did that for about i think three to four days or so and then they they pretty much said you know um based on like how you did on the trial we want to you know see how you like how much knowledge you have on cards and see how you do on the grading test stuff like that um so once all that was done they just offered me a 
a contract and then I made the decision to go. And then I've always had an interest in cards, let's say 25 like plus years, even, even when I was like really young, like six or seven. So I've always been in like the hobby and always like collected and always like bought cards and sold them, things like that. Um, I would say this, one of the restrictions they have, I thought that prevented um, a lot of people from taking the job is that you can't sell any graded cards like under your name. Like you can't sell them on like eBay, like you can't set up at shows, um, you can't post stuff on forums, um, things like that. Like, I remember I was just even trying to post about a card just to buy for my personal collection. And it somehow people knew like what my like, um, blowout card forums name was and like, Oh, I got, uh, I got a hold of uh, you of trying to buy, um, you know, a certain player's card and you, we can't even have you posting about, you know, certain players cards. I was like, okay, like good to know. So yeah, that was pretty much the whole process. And, uh, I just, I, I definitely learned a lot there about, you know, what to look for on cards and how to grade them. And I, I definitely liked working with, with, uh, the people I was working there with too. So, mm. so I actually feel a little better about you just explaining, um, the process, the fact that they put you through like a three to four day almost like interview at the beginning yeah. where you had to go through this trial with them and here are a bunch mm -hmm. of cards. You need to prove to us that you know how to grade oh, these yeah. things. Um, yeah. yeah, that, that actually makes me feel, that makes me feel a, a lot better. That, that seems, that's yep. like, a, that's a grind at three or four. Yeah. And they interview. have you do a grading test too. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's more than I expected to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Um, what sort of training did they give you once you started and how often did you get the training? Be 